Yes, there's a, there's a letter in Nature uh, by a group that tells us that uh, the uh, radius of the, of the proton is about 4% smaller than what we thought it was. So the proton's got a size and we always thought we understood the size of the proton. It was well defined, it, we could explain it, a, a, a way of measuring it was, had been developed that would, could be accounted for through the theories of quantum electrodynamics, which is probably the best tested theory we have. Proton, of course, is a fairly small object. It's very light and its, its radius is extremely small. I've actually written it down here if you want to see it. So there it is, the radius of the proton is 0.84 femtometers. Now what's a femtometer? A femtometer is 10 to the minus 15th of a meter. What was it before? What well, happened? that's a good question. I'll write it down as well. That was, uh, the old value was, again I'm rounding it to two significant figures, 0.87 times 10 to the minus 15 meters. So that's the, that's the new radius and that's the old radius. So the proton has shrunk by 4%. It's 4% smaller than we thought it was before these beautiful new accurate measurements. It might not sound like a very big distance in, in actual size, in actual you know, meters, but actually when you, as a percentage of, the, of what we've previously thought, it's, it's quite a big difference. This group of uh, physicists in Switzerland, they've done this fantastic experiment and they've taken it over six years to do it. Or is it 10 years? They've, they've had the data for over six years. Basically, they've seen that the proton seems to have got smaller in size than we thought it was by about 4%, which of course doesn't sound very much, but in terms of understanding it from the theoretical standpoint, where we thought we had the theory that would explain the size of the proton and it seemed to work very well, a 4% shift is a huge difference. What does it mean? Well, does it mean, for example, that I, I, I'm 4% thinner than I was? Unfortunately not. So although I can just about put a notch in on my belt and reduce uh, my waistline by 4%, uh, it isn't because the proton has suddenly become smaller. Are we missing something? Is there an extra ingredient there? Perhaps the theory as it stands is correct, but there's an extra thing in there that we haven't yet picked up on. So there's the proton and here's the electron. And we know that the proton is positively charged. It carries most of the mass of the atom because it's about 1800 times heavier than the electron. And the electron being negatively charged is uh, moving around, is orbiting around uh, the proton, somewhat like the way in which the Earth is orbiting around the Sun. Yeah, how do you define the size of an object that's fuzzy? It, you, 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 you know, where do you take your tape measure to? Where, where's the edge, edge of it? Where does the fuzziness stop? And of course it's not very well defined that way, so you, you don't do it that way. The way you define the size is you look for something else, an event that um, depends upon the size of the proton, but something else that you can measure, which you can measure very accurately. I've scaled up the proton to the size of a cricket ball, and here's my electron, so I have to scale up the size of the electron orbit as well. And quantum mechanics tells us that the size of the electron orbit is about three kilometers. The radius of the orbit is three kilometers. The, the, so the electron in this classical picture will be orbiting away about two miles away. Now in fact, of course, the laws of quantum mechanics, mechanics tell us that the electron isn't behaving like a, a classically orbiting particle. It has a wave function and it can be here, there and anywhere and we have to describe that by uh, the Schrodinger wave or probability density. But it means that the uh, probability density cloud of the electron is extending a distance of something like three kilometers or two miles around this, this proton. So you don't try and measure simply the size of the proton by getting a, me a tape measure and measuring it out to the edge. You look for something else. And the, and the particular thing that people look for is the fact that in an atom, a hydrogen atom, for example, which consists of a proton and an electron, if you, the electrons go around the proton, okay? So, so they're, they're going around them. So, and depending on which orbit they're in, they, they either go close to the proton or far away from the proton. But you can, if you excite that electron, then you can move it from one orbit to another orbit. And the beauty of quantum mechanics and the thing that makes it so testable is that that difference between one orbit and the other orbit is well defined. It's, it's called discrete. It's not a continuous change. There's, a, there's an actual discrete change in energy. So now if you pump in a bit of energy, a photon of light, smack it in on the, on the electron, the electron will jump up. And if you've pumped in the right amount, in other words, the amount that you need to make it jump up to the next level, it's like jumping up a step. And so the electron moves up to the next orbit, circles around, and then as it comes back down, it will release energy again of that same amount. 
and you can detect that energy. Now it turns out in, in quantum electrodynamics that the, the, those energy steps those gaps depend upon the size of the proton. I mean, what, what, what have they actually done? There's something quite subtle about what, what they've done is what they've essentially taken is a hydrogen atom, sort of modified hydrogen atom. So you'll know from chemistry that, that hydrogen atoms are, are made up of a, a sort of central proton and an electron orbiting around, okay? And what these guys have done is they've sort of taken that model, but they've replaced the electron with, with something else. They've still got the proton, but they've replaced the electron with its with a, a member of the, the next member of the lepton family, which is the muon. Now the muon has properties like the electron, except for its mass. Its mass is to around 200 times bigger than the electron. Now this muon being a lot heavier, it sort of hangs around much more, more closely to the, to, the, to the proton itself. And then they do the same experiment again. They believe they understand how much energy should take you from one muon level to the next energy level. They do that and they find that the the amount of energy they re they've required, or the amount that's released when the muon decays, because it decays extremely quickly, is around 4% different to what they expected. And they've realised that actually the, the proton radius is a little bit less than we previously thought. And as I said, this has quite profound implications for, for the rest of physics, if true. The first thing you should always be asking, and this is what the experimentalists will have been asking themselves over and over and over again, and why it's taken them so long, to actually publish this data in the end, remember they've had this result I think for about six years, is have we got the experiment right? Are we, are we, are we doing it correctly? Are we doing the right measurements? You know, are we interpreting those measurements correctly? So that's the first thing, that's kind of the conservative approach that you, you're very careful. Then you move on to, the, to, to me <laughs> and I get all excited because I start thinking, oh, perhaps this, this is a manifestation of uh, a new force that's kicking in that's over on top of the, quant of the usual force that's arising from quantum electrodynamics. Perhaps there's some hint of a new ingredient that we haven't yet been able to see. And I think for me the, the, sort of the, the important thing is it, it actually puts into question, if true, one of sort of the theories that we thought was, was most correct, that we held most dear, and that's uh, quantum electrodynamics. Saying the proton is 4% smaller. Is that just like saying Mount Everest is a couple of centimetres shorter than we realised or is it a really big deal? It's a bigger deal than saying Mount Everest is a couple of centimetres shorter because you could explain Mount Everest being a couple of centimetres shorter with acceptable physics. It just means perhaps we, we don't know the constituents of Mount Everest quite as well as we thought we did and in fact it's a bit more massive than we thought and the pull of gravity has pulled it down a couple of centimetres or perhaps our experimental equipment's not quite as accurate as we, as we thought. Here, the, the really exciting aspect of this would be if conventional physics can't do it. If once you've tested things like the experiment, tested all the systematics that go with the experiment, and you've reduced those errors down to their minimum, there's still this difference. And that that difference needs to be explained by something. And then, then you begin to move into questions of perhaps our underlying theory, the theory of that of, of, of light and, and matter at the quantum level needs modifying.